All right, hello, if anybody's out there. I, I know I said 7.45, but I wanted to get set up so it was going when people went to check, and I, I hope it's going. I'm, uh, I have to check. I'm drawing on my iPad, but I have to check on my phone. Oh, it looks like it is. When people went to check. Oh, I got to turn. I hope it's going. I'm, uh, I have to check. That was I'm drawing on my iPad. weird. Let me just turn the volume down on my on my phone so yeah so I'm not gonna actually start drawing the turtle per se until 735 well I'll I'll start doing the for real turtle at 745 until then maybe I'll just uh, do a little warm-up here make my pencil a little bigger so if anybody is watching let me know let me know you're there is anybody out there I'll do while we're waiting for this to officially start. See what I did there? Um, I'll do a really simple sea turtle. Just like kind of a more designy type sea turtle. Got the shell and the head here. There we go. Not a lot of details and we got the two flippers coming out here. Ooh, that's a big beefy sea turtle. <laughs> He's a very strong sea turtle. Let's try that again. That's more like it. That's more like a sea turtle flipper. Now this app has a feature, which by the way, this is an app called Procreate on the on the iPad. It has a feature where I can just mirror this, so I could just draw a half and it would duplicate it exactly on the other side, and that's cool and everything, and I like I like using it. I enjoy that quite a bit. But really, when you're doing a drawing like this, um you don't really you don't really want to do that unless you're doing like a specific kind of pattern type thing, because um uh, what'll happen is it just won't look right. It'll be too perfect. You want them to be a little different. In fact, these are probably more similar than they should be, honestly. Give them some little feet. Little tail. Erase this a little bit. So this is a really simple way. Hey, Stacy. This is, I'm just getting warmed up here. This isn't the official sea turtle drawing. <laughs> or, or is it? No, it's not. We still have a few minutes. Um, just a simple way to do like a simple sea turtle design. I mean, you could really, you could just block this in as a shape. Like, let me go to like a an airbrush. Now let me do that a little thicker. Maybe like this. So maybe you're just trying to do like a silhouette or something. And this isn't this isn't hard to do. Um, one of the goals I have for this channel is to convince people out there that they can draw. And because uh, a lot of people think they can't draw and drawing is just a skill, just like anything else. You know, you you just have to learn how to do it. Some people. Yeah, it does come a little more naturally than others. Well, that flipper is out of proportion. Um, but it's a skill that anybody can learn, and it's a skill that has to be practiced to um, to get better at it. Use a little paint bucket fill. Yeah, so you can get kind of a little, little sea turtle look there. Still, this is like the Arnold Schwarzenegger of, of sea turtles. Not a tumor. All right, sorry. Can't I can't mention Arnold Schwarzenegger without making that reference. Anyway, um, yeah. So we'll do the for reals one here in just a few minutes. Go back to my pencil. There are actually there are seven different types of sea turtles in the world. Seven species. Of sea turtles, uh, in Florida we have five. 
So five in Florida. And and when I say five in Florida, um, they don't all nest in Florida. Typically, we get leatherback sea turtles, which are the which are the largest sea turtles. Um, we get loggerhead sea turtles. We get green sea turtles. And those three, we might get Kemp's Ridleys, but they're not going to nest here. They nest in Mexico. And then on a rare occasion, uh, we will get a um, hawksbill sea turtle that will actually nest here. They used to be a more common thing for the hawksbills to nest here, but not anymore, unfortunately. Uh, leatherbacks are going to be more towards like Miami area, South Florida, on the Atlantic coast is is a more typical spot. Um, loggerheads and greens could be anywhere in the state. The uh, the Kemp's Ridleys are interesting. They they're the ones that nest in um, Mexico because they nest they nest during the day, and um, and they nest in groups. So that's kind of kind of different. I'll just doodle a a turtle head while we're waiting here. Turtles have beaks instead of teeth. So here's our turtle beak. And turtle beaks, just like reptile scales, are made of keratin, just like fingernails and hair. And sea turtles do have eyelids. So you can, of course, my turtle is going to be a little cartoony when I do this. So uh, you can make them really expressive. There we go. That would be my cat, Fizzgig. She's apparently going to participate in this. Now, at this point, this could be a lot of different turtles, honestly. This could be a box turtle. This could be um, like just a freshwater turtle. It's really, you have to get into more of the, the rest of the turtle before you get to see what species it is. I mean, there are differences. One of the things is if it's a sea turtle, it's going to have these markings, most sea turtles. Going to have these sort of scale markings on there that'll kind of differentiate. Now, on their neck, it's just kind of wrinkly for the neck. And then, of course, they've got those big flippers coming out there. This is a big difference of sea turtles and, and other species of turtles because most turtles don't have big front flippers. Even your aquatic freshwater turtles have just clawed front arms. Uh, but the sea turtles, that's their motor because they're not really out of the water very much at all. So that's how they are going to move around. And, and uh, I always say that sea turtles are front wheel drive and um, like your typical water pond turtles are rear wheel drive because they use their flippery back feet in there. I don't know, Stacy, if you're the only one that's watching I haven't figured out how I can tell that from from this. I think Sandy was able to see the other day uh, how many were watching. So we'll see. But got a couple minutes. If you are tuning into this, um, here's what I recommend. If you want, you can just watch, and that's fine with me. But if you'd like uh, to participate, just grab a piece of paper, any paper, and a pencil, and maybe an eraser, and uh, and you're good to go. And I'll go over this kind of step by step as I'm drawing it so you could learn how to draw a sea turtle. I have two two people watching. It's probably me and Stacy watching. <laughs> so I think I'm watching from a different account. So oh, and Stacy said to watch. Thank you. Yeah. How's that snorkel gear working out for you? Oh, three now. All right. Um I know you said you, you snorkeled in the in a lake or something. Near you, have you gotten to to put it to the test anymore since then, or, or has that been it so far? Are you saving up for the cruise. All right, let's get another layer ready here. Get this a little bigger. Just used it the one time. Yeah, you'll have to let let me know how you like it. I'm curious to see. Hopefully. Hopefully it works out for you. I think it will. Sounds like you got a pretty good, pretty good set there. Just give him a little 
a little shading. Very cool. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. This is the danger of digital art. If you're on the wrong layer, <laughs> you might think you're doing something and you're not, or you might mess something up. I had already switched layers. Just give him a little, little texture. All right, it is officially 7.45, so I'm gonna go ahead and officially start drawing a sea turtle in the way I kind of already did. So, so, uh, so this is the this is the way I always tell people to draw. Think of things as being broken down into basic shapes. So, when I do a sea turtle, the first thing I want to do is really capture the shell. So I'm going to draw just kind of a big ovally type shape, and I like to draw pretty rough because I can always go in and and clean it up. So now I've got this oval and. I'm going to make this turtle sort of in perspective. So instead of a top-down turtle, it's going to be sort of looking at maybe a, a an angle looking down. So I've got the shell here. And then what I want to do is I want to put in a flipper. So I'm just going to come out here with a curvy line. And these flippers are big. Like I, like I was saying, sea turtles are front-wheel drive, and they are real powerful flippers because they are swimming pretty much their whole life. The only time you'll see sea turtles out of the water is either when they're hatching out of their egg or if it's a female going to lay nests. This this arm's probably a little too big, but that's all right. And then now the back one, I'm going to do kind of the same thing, but because it's back further, uh, because of perspective, it's it's going to be even smaller, really, and a little bit different angle. But the, the key to getting a good sea turtle flipper is just getting these these curves right on here. And um, wait, I think I want to want to change this up a little bit because I think I made it a little bit long. And that's that's why we do this kind of rough. You, you don't want to put like dark permanent lines. So if you're doing this with a pencil, you want to kind of go nice and, and light so that you can make these changes as you go. And that's pretty good. I have a little moth or something landing on my screen right now. So, <laughs> oh, I think it. I think I just went in my mouth. All right, live insect ingestion on YouTube. How about how's that? Um, now I'm going to give him his or her back little flipper back here, and the same thing with the one over here. It's a little bit smaller. It's hidden behind the shell. Now you might be able to start to see how this is sort of a three dimensional. Um, image taking shape here. Some sea turtles you can see a little tail coming out, but uh, but not all the time. Now this is the top of the shell, so sea turtles of course have a bottom shell too, and it's going to hide underneath here, and then their legs, their legs kind of sneak out underneath it, and over here. I think that little insect like committed suicide because it just went right into my mouth <laughs> it's kind of gross but um yeah so now we've got we've got our shell here we've got our flipper and uh all of our flippers and now we just have to add the head now i'm also going to square this off a little bit for the shell and i'm going to i'm going to draw start drawing the head coming out of here just a little bit of a neck and then I'm going to do kind of, if you were here before, you saw me maybe drawing that sea turtle head. I'm just going to add that on here. So we've got sort of um, almost a squared off shape, but there's a little bit of a roundness right here. And then my, my favorite thing to draw on the sea turtle is the beak. So I like to just hook it up like this. Give him a little smile. And then the eye, now this is something people mess up on with animals a lot, is, is where to put the eye. You see me keep changing the shell over here. I don't like where I did that bottom line. Um, a lot of people might put the eye here, or maybe they put the eye up here. But this sea turtle's eye is going to be pretty low, and it's going to be kind of in front of the mouth. And I'm actually going to give him a little, little eyelid here, like so. So a little circle with a little line cutting off the top and then another little dark circle on the inside for his iris or pupil. 
Uh, do I draw from memory or do I look at something? Well, what I would say is when I'm doing something like this, it is from from memory. Uh, but if I'm drawing like a, a more non-cartoony or even a cartoony, but something I'm maybe less familiar with or something I'm going to like really do something with, I will definitely look at reference. Um, sea turtles I've drawn a few times, but even even that, if I looked at a picture of a sea turtle right now, I'd probably be <laughs> making a few little changes. Uh, something like a shark, I can draw pretty well. And uh, there's kind of a term for that. Artists sort of consider that like building up your, your visual um, encyclopedia in your brain. So the more you draw something, the more you can just draw from from memory. So this this is just the sea turtle's pretty much from memory, but I've drawn this style sea turtle before. So um so I've got so I looked at a reference at one point, but I honestly um it's always good to look at reference. I probably should have pulled some up for this live drawing. Now I'm going to I'm going to focus on his head here for a minute. So so this beak it's going to have maybe some some markings like this just to give it some texture. You can I'm not going to get into shading probably on this one. Um uh, I'm going to give a little line here to indicate that this this eye is round and it's three-dimensional and it sticks out of the head. And then I've got these lines on the neck to show these these wrinkles. And then I'm going to give this sea turtle some markings. So sea turtles, now you can look at a sea turtle. This is a good place to look at a reference. You could look at a sea turtle and see that there are definite patterns that these little patches go in. And I'm not looking at that right now. So uh, now it's not 100% the same on every turtle. There is some randomness to it, which means that you can kind of get away without looking at it. But things that you will notice if you look is that um, they're not going to be on the lower part of the neck. They're just going to be on the upper part of the neck. And that's going to make your sea turtle look a little bit more more realistic. And then same thing with the, with the flippers. They tend to have these sort of um, patches of scales. And there's sort of a pattern to it. You know, you'll see these sort of blocked off shapes. And you can color them in and they'll look more familiar. But then on the bulk of the flipper, you just kind of get these sort of more random patches. And these will vary from individual sea turtle to individual sea turtle, but there is probably more of a pattern than what uh, is showing up. Hey, Randy. Tony and Jenny always call you Mr. C, Randy. Is that what you like to go by as Mr. C? <laughs> or do they just call you Mr. C? I, I never found out why they, uh, why they do that. But sometimes it always confuses me. I'm like, that's Randy. Why are they call him? Oh, his last name. Okay, we're just doing a little little sea turtle art here, and um, yeah, working on the on the front wheel drive flipper of our sea turtle. Now, different sea turtles have different markings. So this this sea turtle, although it's not specifically. Um, a definitely like a certain species it's I would say uh, they know they just call you that um, I would say that this probably is the closest resemblance to a green sea turtle more than maybe uh, other other species of sea turtle and I say that because of the way I'm doing sort of the markings on the flipper but also because of the like the size of the head compared to the body so like if this were a loggerhead sea turtle, then this this would be a much bigger head on this turtle. Um, <laughs> that was weird looking. Uh, if it was a leatherback, the shell would be different. If it was a Kemp's Ridley, um, they, they're sort of similar looking to maybe a loggerhead, but the head's still a little bit more in proportion to the body. Uh, if it was a hawk's bill, they have, they have that more like hawk shape bill and then the shell is more jagged and stuff as well. There we go. But but the thing to remember is when when you see a drawing like this is that um I mean I'm doing this pretty rough and 
but it's it's basically still it's just these shapes just these basic shapes it's basic ovals and basic triangles and and all these things and just pay attention to to where to to put these shapes and you can build your creature and one of the biggest challenges i think for uh, for artists is to learn to draw what they see and not what they think they see so um, like Stacy was asking me about if I look at references and, and I said, well, I should be looking at references. And a lot of times I do. It's crushed. Yes. Um, but in this case, I, I'm not. And that's OK. Uh, but if you look at references, you're going to get you're going to get a lot of details that are going to help you better represent the animal. But also you can pay attention to what's actually there. So if if you ask me to draw something, and I'm not super familiar with drawing it my my mind probably has a picture of what that looks like and it's probably not accurate at all okay that's way too many scoots on the top of this turtle shell i gotta make them bigger um it's probably not very accurate so uh, i should start with the middle one here make that nice and big so when you draw stuff you want to really try and not see it as what you think what it is but just look at the, the basic shapes and stuff of it, and that helps quite a bit. We'll give him a little line over here. This is a simple way to draw a turtle shell. Now we've got our, our, our sea turtle here, and now what I can do is I can go through and I can kind of add more detail. I could add color, that sort of thing. One of the advantages of digital is I can... I can lower the opacity of this, and then I can add another layer. And here we'll do this for fun, and we'll uh, we'll ink ink him in. We'll use like kind of an ink brush instead of coloring him, and see if we can kind of really get some of these lines down the way we we want them to. Let's see how this looks. Make it more serious looking. <laughs> Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little circle. And that circle will add a highlight, which um, which is going to give this character a little bit of life. Make him seem alive. Now the cool thing about doing this is now I could take and I could make this into a coloring page or I could paint behind it. I could print it off and paint it. Um, lots of different options. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I don't want to keep you guys on here <laughs> forever. But um, we'll just add a little bit of detail on this guy. One of the things I want to do with this channel, I, I did that poll today. I know you guys, I think both of you guys um, answered that. I want to be able to do like longer, more finished drawings and I can do those in time lapse so that they don't take, you know, you don't have to spend four hours watching them <laughs> or something like that. Stacy says, oh, my brother can draw anything, but I'm not artistic at all. Used to go down to the beach in the summer. Oh, and airbrush shirts. Oh, airbrushing is something I've never done, but it's always fascinating to me. That's really cool. Show me how to draw a palm tree. And time is able to draw. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I mean, it's just it's just building up that that library of things you can draw. So you learn how to draw a palm tree, and then you can draw palm trees, and then you learn how to draw a sea turtle, and then you can draw sea turtles, and then you learn how to draw a shark, and you learn how and you can draw sharks, and then before you know it, you start realizing that some of those basic fundamentals uh, are used no matter what you're drawing. So all of a sudden, drawing becomes less daunting and scary and and you can draw all kinds of cool stuff. Because really drawing is just knowing how to look at stuff and then create those simplified lines to represent it or colors or patterns or whatever it may be. So I'm going to add a little more detail on the shell here. Now, if anybody is watching this now or in the future, I'll leave this up and you decide to draw a sea turtle from this, um, go, to the, go to the Facebook page and become a member over there and then post your drawings. I'd love to see 
some sea turtle drawings up there. Um, I do have on my Matt Allen YouTube page, which you can I think you can find in this particular page, uh, I did a thing called Drawing Science where I did this sea turtle and I did quite a few others. And um, I'm kind of, this one I'm kind of bringing back, but I wanted to make it on its own page, not just my personal page that nobody can ever find and kind of tie it into, you know, some of the cruising animals that I talk about, but then also be able to go beyond that. So, yeah. All right. All right. I'm just going to add a few more details and I'll wrap this up, but thank you guys for watching. I appreciate that. Um, I'll probably do a lot more of these for right now. They'll probably just pop up randomly like this one did, but eventually I plan on making it more of a scheduled thing so that people know it's going to happen. And um, maybe I can get some people to draw along with me. That'd be cool. So if you do like this or you know somebody that would, um, let them know about the channel and we'll see if we can build a little creature art community go along with this, get some artwork going on, or just learning about creatures. There we go. I'll turn this one off here. Yeah, thank you, Stacy, and thank you, Randy, and if anybody else is watching, thank you, or if you watch down the road, I will go ahead and clock out here, but uh, yeah, have a fantastic evening, guys. We'll talk to you later. Oh, thank you, Randy. He said he's enjoying it. I know you can't see these comments when you watch on YouTube because I have to live stream through another app. It's weird. It's complicated. But um, so I don't think people will see the comments, unfortunately, in the YouTube playback until I can figure that out. I'm working on it. All right. We'll see you guys later.